Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how to choose export options in iMovie on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So after you're done making your iMovie project you need to export it. You have a lot of options when exporting and the options will determine both the quality of the video and the file size. So here I am inside of an iMovie project. I can export by either clicking this button here and it gives me these four options or I can go to File, Share and I get the same four options there. Now Image will just export the current frame as an image. The other three options allow you to export video. Both Email and the YouTube and Facebook options give you a very limited set of settings. If we take a look at Email it's only going to allow us to choose a resolution here. and We can go to a pretty small resolution. After all you probably want to have a pretty small video if you're going to send it by email. I wouldn't try to send any video by email. Videos are just too big to send by email. Even if you can do it it's quite an assumption to think that the other person can easily receive that large file. And you don't get to choose really any more options but the ones here. Likewise if you choose YouTube and Facebook you also get a very restricted set of options. You can just choose the resolution just like with email. You can choose some different resolutions going all the way up to 4K if your video is 4K. But you can't choose anything else like the compression amount. And this doesn't upload to YouTube or Facebook. It just creates a file and then you upload using the website itself. Previous versions of iMovie allowed you to upload directly to sites like YouTube. But it's really a good thing in my opinion that iMovie doesn't allow you to do that anymore. Because if you're uploading to a site you really should be using the website which gives you the full set of upload options and allows you to set all the features of that video. Now if you want all of the export options you would simply go to File, Share, and then File. And this gives you the full set here. So first you have the format and of course if you're exporting a video you want to choose video and audio not audio only. Then you get to choose the resolution. So this is the dimensions of the video in pixels. Here you could see you get four options. 1080p is the standard high definition video. It's 1920 by 1080 in size. 4K is 3840 by 2160 in size. 720 is the original high definition format. It's a much smaller 1280 by 720. And then 540 is actually pretty close to standard definition video. So video like we might have used years ago or would be found today on DVDs which are still standard definition not high definition. Now choosing one of these is going to extremely affect the size. You could see the estimated size right here. In this case here at 1080 for a 1 minute and 2 second video this is going to end up to be about 157 megs. But if I were to reduce the resolution and make this only 720p then you could see that drops considerably to 95 megs. If I go all the way down to standard definition you could see it's now 56 megs. On the other hand if I go up to 4K you could see it balloons to 390 megs. Now you may not see all four of these. In particular you might not see 4K. In order to have the 4K export option your video clips have to be 4K. And specifically the first clip you added to your project needed to be 4K. The only way to have a 4K iMovie project is that when you create the project the very first clip you add is 4K in size. So if you plan on making a 4K video then it's important that you first import a 4K video clip even if that's not going to be the first clip you're going to use. You can then remove it and then start adding 1080 clips or photos and at some point add the 4K clip later on. Obviously you're going to have some 4K clips in there or else it doesn't really make sense to export in 4K. You'd just be upscaling lower resolution video. So in this case here I'm using all 4K but if I wanted to create a smaller file one thing I would consider is just simply setting it to 1080. They're not going to get the full resolution of the video but if my goal is to bring down the file size changing the resolution might be the first thing that I do. Next you could set quality. You've got three settings here at the top. Low, medium, and high. And choosing low would create a smaller file size. But you're sacrificing quality here so the video is not going to look as good. Medium will create a slightly larger file with a slightly better quality and high will create a larger file still with even better quality. You could also choose ProRes. ProRes is going to be minimally compressed and it's going to create a huge file. 
Use this if you plan on exporting this from iMovie and then bringing it back into iMovie to be part of another project. Or perhaps bring it into some other app to do something else with it. So in other words what you're exporting here isn't what you're going to share with other people. It's what you're going to use in further editing. And then finally we've got Custom. And Custom allows you to set the quality with the slider here. And it defines the quality by megabits per second. So here at this setting for 157 it's 20 megabits per second. I could lower this amount to have fewer megabits per second in the file. And that's going to decrease the size and also decrease the quality. So if I go all the way down here I can bring this down to 27.9 megs. A pretty small file for a 1 minute 1080p video. But the quality is going to suffer quite a bit. On the other hand I can bring it all the way up to something higher. Have a larger file with slightly better quality than the default high. Now in addition to that you also have this Compress setting. There's only two options here. Faster and better quality. So you would use Faster if you're exporting to check out your finished product and see what you've got. Using better quality is going to improve the quality of the final video ever so slightly. But it will take longer to produce the output. Notice the file size doesn't change because it's still going to be saving at a certain megabits per second rate. So in general I use Faster until I'm completely done with the project and I want to produce something that I'm going to upload to YouTube or send to whoever is getting the file. Then for that last export I'll switch to better quality and use that. So how do you choose which one is right for you? Well you can make some guesses based on the file size. Maybe there's a limit to what you're willing to have as far as how big the file is. But also you could just experiment. You could try exporting at low, medium, high, 720p, 1080 See what the differences are for you. Maybe a lower quality is perfectly acceptable for you and for this particular project. And then maybe on another project you want higher quality. A lot is going to depend on actually what's in the video. For instance if you're shooting on a tripod where the camera is perfectly still and the background isn't changing much. It's an indoor background. Then you may not need as high of megabit per second setting to get decent quality. Whereas say filming holding your iPhone in a moving car is going to require a lot of change on every frame and you probably need a higher megabits per second in order to have decent quality in that video. So export a few different ways. And if your video is long consider making a second project that maybe just has one or two short clips in it. It's maybe 10 seconds long as your sample and try exporting that 10 seconds in different quality settings. And once you find the one that works for the type of clips in your main project then use those same settings for that big project. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.